in some songs. We're working on getting it live for you this week so you can take it back to your church. The Lord gave us this concept. It's called Honor Him. What I love about our founder and about our presider is they're yet still committed to bridging the gap between Calvary and Pentecost. That they're committed to the reformation. That we're not replacing it, we're just renovating it. That we're not replacing it, we're just updating it to make sure that we're not using applications that are out of date. So tonight we're going to celebrate just a, a few moments. Tonight is going to be amazing. I remember 30, 29 years ago, I came and didn't know anybody but Jeffrey LaValle. And so uh, a, 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 he was a district overseer then. Robert Lodge said, let's go to the youth division because whoever's in the youth division now will be leading the fellowship in the future. I went to the youth division, didn't know anybody, and they asked me to lead the worship there. And one of the young men who's going to minister tonight was my keyboardist back then. His name was Paul Morton Jr. And 30 years later, he's not Paul Morton Jr., he's PJ Morton, Grammy Award winner. He's going to minister. He's going to minister tonight. But before he comes, I want you to receive. We're going to release this. It's our responsibility. And thank you again to our presider for giving us an opportunity to lay the foundation. We're still building a new structure on an old foundation. There's a song that we used to sing that just simply says, He knows. Royce Mosley is going to come after Royce has ministered. After Royce has ministered, Bishop Brian Pierce is going to come and sing another song that's on the Honor Him record. Then after that, the next voice you'll hear will be that of our guest for the night, P.J. Morton. Will you put your hands together and receive your ministry of worship as they come? Just in 
Jesus. He'll make a way. I don't know, babe. Help me cry. He tonight just how much we can bear I want you to know that whatever you're facing God's got it right in the palm of his hand and he knows just how much Somebody just give him a wave offering in here. I feel the presence of God. Old song we used to say. Anybody remember that? There's a prayer just found fountain free to Mount 
can. Another verse says this. Lord, 
nice to hear Bishop Carlos Malone sing that one time. We ain't really got time, but you in the room. Sing it once. Rest beyond. Rest beyond. That rest. Gospel family, how we feeling tonight? 30 years, uh, you know, I spent my whole life in this, in this uh, fellowship. And uh, it's more than a, a conference to me. It's more than a reformation. I've made lifelong family and friends here. And this is family night, so I'm gonna bring some people out. I'm not gonna say too much. I just, I'm gonna need y'all help. Is that all right, Full Gospel? If you repeat this enough, you'll start to believe it. Some help with me tonight. Come on, Jasmine. Come on, sing it right here. Come on. Yeah. Ain't no need to worry, cause it's gonna get better. Yeah. Better. Joy coming in the morning, and it's better. Oh, better. I've been through some trials and tribulations, and it's better. better. Oh, yeah. oh, better, 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 better. Yeah. We got more, we got a little help. Come on, Bishop Love, you gonna say something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all make some noise for Bishop Love right here. Come on, say something. Oh. Take it to the Lord, cause I know that He's able. Better. Somebody say, hang on in there, hang better. on in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna get better, better. 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 All right. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Come on, man. I've been here a long time. This is my lifelong friend right here. Yeah.
it's your Brian Pierce. No matter what you're going through, it's gonna get it, gonna get yeah, better. Yeah. Better. God's gonna work it out for you. It's gonna get better. Hey, I like this part. Don't worry about it, leave it alone. Yeah. Cause it's gonna get better. Tell somebody, tell them. Yeah. Don't worry about it, leave it alone. Yeah. It's gonna get better. Change. Change is gonna come. You've been waiting for a long time, but I know. Said 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 I know. I know. I know. If you don't mind, Bishop Murphy, just tell him it's gonna get better right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to think PJ loved me, and then he asked me to come sing after Brian Pierce. I do love him. sound like Bishop Morton. I guess you could sing this a little bit right here and there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, better, better. Oh, 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 yeah. Come on, say better. better. your Bible, your iPad, your smartphone. If you don't have any of those, just place your hand over your heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And repeat after me, if I receive this word, this kingdom constitution, 
with my mind only. This word will be dead for me. This word will not help me. But if I receive this word, this kingdom constitution with the spirit over my mind, over my emotions, over my fleshly desires, this word will be life for me. Lord, I don't need religious form and fashion. I need life. Why don't you look at somebody, tell them, receive life. You may be seated. Jesus has come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, verses 17 and 18 from the New Living Translation says, For Christ didn't send me to baptize, listen to Paul, but to preach the good news, the gospel, and not with clever words. Paul had all kind of degrees. I mean, the man was smart. The man was a genius. But listen to Paul when he preached, not with clever speech for fear that the cross of Christ would lose its power. So focus on you. People miss the power of God. But verse 18 says, the message of the cross is foolish. The message of the cross is foolish to those who are headed for destruction. That's who it's foolish to. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. But we who are being saved, and people are still being saved every day. They, people were saved even this week who came to Christ. But we who are being saved know it is the very power of God. So I, I want to focus in on the message of the cross is foolish to those who are headed for destruction. And I want to ask you a question tonight. It's been 30 years, but I need to ask this question. Can you handle being called foolish? Would you look at somebody and ask them, can you handle being called foolish? There was time we didn't mind. We looked at the Founding Fathers tonight who helped us get this fellowship going. These were 12 powerful men, 12 powerful ministries, influential men of God. And when I spoke to them and they connected to the Spirit, they said, we got it and we got your back. Now, the question that I probably should have asked them as they got their plane tickets and they made their way to New Orleans, I should have asked them, can you handle being called foolish? Because we might walk up into that Superdome and ain't nobody in there. And people would have looked at us, ha, ha, ha. They thought they was going to start something, but... We trusted God. When you think about the full gospel Baptist church fellowship, when we talk about to Baptist people, you can have the fullness of the Holy Ghost. More of him and less of you. Oh, yeah, when you get saved, you receive the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, but the fullness of the Holy Ghost is more of him and less of you. So they, they, they thought the full gospel Baptist church fellowship was nothing but foolishness. You going to that mess? Can you handle being called foolish? When they didn't 
when they couldn't relate because when you talk about, about, about the Holy Ghost and understand what that is all about and they didn't even believe in speaking in tongues and they were talking about us but, but Acts 2 and 4 says and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues. They thought we were foolish for because you had a heavenly language. Can, can you handle being called foolish? When, when, when we accepted women to preach the gospel, there were those that thought we were foolish. They, they done lost their mind. Women supposed to sit down and be quiet, but they didn't read their Bible. The Bible says in the spiritual realm, no more man, no more woman, not in the spiritual realm. They ain't talking about the physical realm. Don't try to come into my bathroom. But it was talking about the spiritual realm. No, no more man, no, no more male, no more female, but one in Christ Jesus, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. They were calling us foolish. So foolishness, foolishness to the world is a lack of good common sense. Foolishness, a lack of good common sense. Silly, ridiculous, absurd, senseless. So, so the question is, who really wants to sound foolish? You know what I found out in the 21st century church? That people today don't like to be called foolish. We're too smart for that. Don't call me foolish. So we have become like the church in Romans, the 10th chapter, verses 2 through 4. For I bear them record that they have a seal of God, but not according to knowledge. Verse 3 says, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Verse 4 says, for Christ, hear this, y'all. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. The law, when Christ came, should not be for the righteous because Jesus shifted it. If you are just being kept by the law, you ain't going to make it. But the whole key now, when Jesus came, he said, I need somebody to fall in love with me. Falling in love with Jesus makes the difference. And when you fall in love with Jesus, he's greater than any law. Our problem is... You can get wrapped up in the law and miss the love of Jesus. That's why you shouldn't even be tithing by just the law. That, that, that's why some of you, yet yeah, you tithe, I give you credit for tithing, but you see, you tithe, but you're just going to obey the law. And the law is, you know, because I've seen some people do it. They pay their tithes. $24.22. Now, you know, you're no longer under the law. You do know you can round it off to $25. Do you, you do know that. You, you can have that much love for Jesus. It's all right. Don't, don't get nervous. You can actually round it off. I'm trying to think whether 21 cents or 22 cents. 
We must move to the next level in our lives because the problem with the church today, we're too busy trying to blend in instead of standing out. You can't stand out if you blend in. God has made us different, and that's why I thank God for the full gospel Baptist Church Fellowship because I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So listen, if you really want to know the truth about God, now listen, let me, let me tell you first of all, because I'm getting ready to tell you the truth about God. Now the natural, the natural man is not going to understand this. When you're in the flesh, you're not going to understand this. But there's some spiritual people that don't understand it because when you allow the flesh to get into the spiritual, that's when you become carnal. That's all carnality is. When you allow the flesh to get into that which is spiritual. So I got some news for you. Listen to this, and I'm going to be able to back it up in the Word of God. God is pro-choice. I, I, I'm going to explain it to you. I'm going to explain it to you. You see, but but the church, even the church that gets wrapped up in the natural, we say, I, I don't like God's plan. I prefer a, a law instead of a choice. But listen, his thoughts are not your thoughts. His ways are not your ways. Do you know at one time, at one time, God hired and he had law enforcers? Re read the song in 1 Samuel 18 and 7. This was their song. Saul has killed his thousands and David his ten thousands. We're excited because, oh, we're knocking them off if they don't want to do what God wants them to do. Think about the strongest man that ever lived, Samson. This man was so strong, he picked up a jawbone of a donkey. 3,000 men were coming at him. He took the jawbone of the donkey and killed all of them. Don't you think if God wanted it to happen today, he could give to every preacher that was preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, those that disobeyed God and rebelled against God, don't you know God could still have a preacher to raise his hand, and when he raised his hand, people would just get strokes, that just hands would just wither up. People would drop dead, but God said, no, I don't want you just to live by a law. I want you to love me. In other words, this is what God is saying. If he or she don't want me for me, I'm not going to force them. You got to stop trying to force people to be saved. See, I grew up in that kind of home. They, you know, my daddy, my daddy, you eat my bread, drink my water, you going to serve my God. And he'd take that bell out, oh yeah, you going to be saved. You, yeah, you going to be saved. I'm going to whip you until the blood of Jesus hits you. No. It has to be when you fall in love with Jesus. When you fall in love with Jesus. So the self-righteous church don't like God's pro-choice plan. In fact, there are many people, hear me good, many preachers have stopped preaching and their main goal now is to support a political party 
that they feel can get things done better than God. And they don't care if they got to sell their morals. They will sell their soul to the devil just for power because there is no way you can tell me that you really love the Lord and you're going to support somebody who's corrupt, who lies more than anybody lies, who pays off porn stars. Come on, help me somebody. Ah, uh, just to keep your power? And act like we're so holy and so righteous. I remember there was a time if they wasn't doing right, hey, I love you, brother, but uh, I can't follow you because you ain't doing what you're supposed to do. Oh, but now there are no lines because people want power. So could I tell you this? Because I got to give you Bible on this. Don't you just leave here saying God is pro-choice. This is more day, God is pro-choice. No, indeed. So I, I got to give you a Bible. I got to give you a Bible. Because right here in Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter and the 19th verse, this is, this is what the Word of God says. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. He's even going to record this day against you. Don't try to blame it on nobody else. God says, I record this this day in heaven and earth against you that I have set before you choices. There's life and there's death. The life he's talking about is abundant life. And the death he's talking about is the wages of sin is death. So God gives choices. Now he preaches, and this is what this is what he says in the word of God. Now choose life. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about you better choose abundant life that both thou and thy seed may live. So everybody has a choice. God's not going to force you. And you ain't going to, I am pro-life. I am pro-life, pro but I'm pro-life slash pro-choice because I'm sorry I don't believe that no father ought to rape a 13 year old child and you make that 13, old, 13 year old child have a baby the devil is a liar somebody raped that you don't know a demonic rape now, it's your choice if you want it but I know God well enough that I may know him. I know him. I know him. He ain't going to make nobody have something from a demonic relationship caused by the devil who is destructive and has come to destroy and to kill to make you have that. So that's why I believe he says, I give you, oh God, I give you choices but make sure you 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 choose me just make sure you you consult me as it relates to what's going on i ain't talking about somebody who's just jumping in and out of any bed oh, i gotta go get another one i gotta go get another i ain't talking to you <laughs> mother say with your old nasty self huh? <laughs> i ain't talking to you But I, 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 I'm concerned about people understanding. That's why Joshua, the 24th chapter, comes back in the New Living Translation and says, but if you refuse to serve the Lord, hear, hear Joshua, if you refuse to serve the Lord, I'm not going to force you. Then choose today whom you will serve. Would you prefer the gods of your ancestors? serve beyond the Euphrates or will it be the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live? Now Joshua preaches his sermon. He says, you choose this day whom you will serve. But here's what the child of God has to explain what your choice is as for me. 
and my house. I, I can't force you. I can't make you be saved. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You got to know what side you're on, and you can't be ashamed what people say about you. If they got a choice, I got a choice. So, 1 Corinthians 2 and 14, but the natural man receive it not receive it not the things of the spirit of God for they are foolishness unto him stop thinking everybody is going to understand you you're going to sound like foolishness to people who are wrapped up in the flesh I, I am here to tell you uh, because the things that you're dealing with are spiritually discerned Lord take the church back where we become the spiritual church where our weapons are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds you can't pull down strongholds that's the trouble with the world to now they're trying to pull down their strongholds with AR-15s the devil is a lie I believe that the church if we wake up if my people who are called by my name if I could just get them to humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then would I hear from heaven and I would heal their land. I believe a healing will take place if the church will wake up, if we will understand who we are and the power that God has given to us. I'm almost finished. But the Bible says that we are peculiar people. Deuteronomy 14, for there thou art and holy people. A holy people unto the Lord thy God. And the Lord has chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. Peculiar, strange, odd, different. If you are in the crowd and nobody knows the difference between you and some wicked person, you need to check yourself. I believe that God is waking up the church today to understand what we must do for him. So finally, this is what God is saying to the church. Do you know what he's really saying to the church? But Jesus, this world is so messed up. This world is in bad shape. Lord, what are we going to do? Do you know what the word of God lets us know? And you got to believe it. You got to believe it tonight. You got to believe it tonight with all of your heart. God said it will be through the preaching of the gospel that lives will be changed. I'm here to tell you, I'm not going to let anybody degrade what God gave to me. I still believe if I preach truth, because I've seen the pimp stop pimping. I've seen the prostitute stop prostituting just from the anointing of the word of God what you ought to pray for instead of wondering how if God's going to do it you got to trust him and you ought to ask him for the anointing because I'm here to tell you the anointing destroys every yoke so the natural man is not going to understand what the real gospel is all about oh but if you let God do his work and just preach like you're supposed to preach and stop compromising in your preaching and stop Stop trying to be Dr. Feel-Good Preacher and preach what God told you to pray. The doctor that operated on me when I had cancer in 2006, a, a surgeon from Greater St. Stephen, he had to tell me that I had cancer. He could have said, I love Bishop. I, I can't tell him that. I'm, I, I just, I'm just leave him alone. Uh, maybe he'll be all right. I ain't going to tell him he got cancer. But I'm so glad he walked in that room and said, Bishop, we found cancer in you. And we got to get it out. 
There's some of us, we ain't worried about getting sin out no more because you want to keep somebody happy, but you will let them die in their sins trying to keep somebody happy. But I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray that God will give us the victory in our lives because I'm here to tell you, you can wait on the laws to do it, but I'm here to tell you the church has to be before the law. I may have some witnesses in this place. Women, don't you start a seminar trying to tell women how to keep your husband. And I know how to keep, I know how to keep your husband. Now, y'all, y'all gather, it's going to cost you $30, but I'm going to show you how to keep your husband. And they go on to say, now, this is what I do. I have put a detective on my husband. 24-7, every day of the week. He ain't doing nothing wrong because I got a detective on him. Ain't no woman want a detective on your husband 24-7. You want your husband's heart. I wish I had a witness. If you think God just wants to keep a law on you, I may have some witnesses in here. He wants your heart. I'm here to tell you, oh, I'm falling in love with Jesus. It's the best thing that I've ever done. Ah, oh, but you got to make some decisions tonight. Can you handle being called foolish? Because I'm here to tell you, sometimes people are going to talk about you. Sometimes they're going to lie on you sometimes they're gonna misuse you but that's all right if Aretha could sing it for a no good man you ought to be able to sing it to Jesus I'll be a fool for you I think I got some witnesses here because God wants to turn it around in your life. How many of you could say, I'll be a fool for you, Jesus? Whatever you want me to do, wherever you want me to go, whatever you want me to say, I feel <laughs> like preaching in this place. I'm here to tell you that the God whom we serve is there anybody you know that he is able i'm telling you we need some fools for christ we too cute today that's why the church is not getting the victory like we're supposed to get the victory but i'm here to tell you we gotta win them with love how many of you know when you win them with love it makes the difference can I tell you the mistake that I made with my wife when I met my wife when I met my wife she wasn't my wife she wasn't my wife but she was going with this little little man and my problem was I kept talking about him I just, you really like him come on D now you, you, you ain't got to have nobody like that. And I mean, she would just get defense. He's a good man, yeah, yeah. You think you something because you're a preacher. I ain't think about you. I like him. I like him. So I had to, I had to flip the script. I just, I, 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 had to, I had to start, I had to start talking some nice stuff. And I bring her a gift. Oh, yeah, yeah. How, how you doing? How, how's your little friend doing? Yeah, she's doing all right. I'm here to tell you. That's what the church has to do. The Bible says, with loving kindness, have I drawn thee? I'm speaking it in this place because the Bible says, and I Oh, speak Jesus. And I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. I think I got some witnesses. Won't God be there? Won't he supply your every need? Just a little talk with Jesus will make it all right. Full gospel, 
Let them talk about us. Let them lie on us. But look what God is doing. I'm here to tell you, we ain't seen our best days yet. But I'm so glad my heart is fixed. My mind is made up. Now don't wait till the battle is over. I need somebody shout now. Shout! 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 Is there any money? Is, is there any money? Are you ready to go to the next level? Anybody? You got a made up mind. Yes, I can handle being called foolish, y'all. I can handle, I can handle people laughing at me, calling me crazy, but they don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. I may have some witnesses here. Won't he be there? Oh, he will. Oh, he will. I, I, I know that he will. Any foods for Christ? Why don't you wave your hand? Why don't you wave your hand? I'm glad about it. I'm glad about it. I'll be a fool for you. 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 I'll be a fool. I'll be a fool. I will. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. I, I'm glad about it. I'm glad. I, I'm glad. I, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. It's time for revival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Revivals ain't foolishness. We need to go back and just say, Lord, just have your way. We need to go back when we were not ashamed to bow down in the presence of the Lord. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Glad about it. I'm glad about it. They laughed at us. But who's laughing now? If you hold on. If you trust God. He'll see you too. And it's heading straight for me. I believe just believe I see victory and it's heading straight for me. 
I believe. Yes, believe. Help me say, help me say, say. faith can't be ignored. Listen. Faith can't be ignored. So hold on to being restored. I believe. Just believe. Help me say, say, faith can't be ignored. So hold I believe any believers in the house just believe oh my faith can be ignored no. so hold on to being restored I believe just with you it just says change is gonna come but you gotta give them praise like it's already done I'm 